Muslim and I was a Christian going to sell Hajj, I would say, Kya yaar? I mean, what does he know about Hajj? And that is the problem that's happening in a way because we are, we are Hindus, mainly in India, or Muslims, or you know, Jains, very few Buddhists, and the Buddhists are also very, so, uh, there's, so I think we have to think, how do we bring friends who are Buddhists to be the ambassadors to India, to sell Buddhism, to understand what this practice is. When somebody does this, what it means in India, what it means to a Sri Lankan. So I think, um, so that palette, but of course we, we, we can increase the, the width of our market through many interesting things. Yesterday I was uh, Ayurveda. Every, villagers know, oh, you oh, oh, jari buti here, this is, this, this is for this, this is for jaundice, this is for diabetes. The birds, the saras screen, the tallest flying bird is around Shravasti in that whole area, that belt with Lumbini. Lumbini is made a Korean sanctuary. Chinese, Japanese love cranes. They're just floating around. It is not part of our itinerary. So we have to understand that there are lots of other elements, whether it's the trees, the worship of trees, the understanding that Sujata, when she was going to, when she gave the khir, she was actually going to a tree, to do tree worship. The women of Bihar are still doing this, going around a tree with their moli. So how do you reference the stories of the Buddha to the places, to Indian culture? And I think that's a very important aspect of what we have to do as Indians. To try and really, and I, I, this is not just to Indians, it's, it's a sort of dialogue. Because what Buddhism is doing, as Mr. Rana said earlier, it is really the diplomacy of, 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 of our country. What does President uh, Pranam Mukherjee do when he goes to Vietnam? He gives a Bodhi sapling. It is worth everything. It is worth everything. You, you cannot, it's, uh, you know, inestimable. So this is the sort of heritage, and this links us at a very deep level with Japan, China, everyone. So I think lots of ideas. This whole day will be full of ideas. One or two which came for me was that I think <clears throat> we should do something like an international research center. We could do it in Bihar. We could do it in UP. Get Thais. There's a lot of good research going on around the world. But through that, if the Thais do their research, the Thais will come. Indians did the archaeology in Kapilavastu. Nobody trusts it. They say, ah, this is where Buddha. But it was an Indian effect. So Buddhism is much beyond the boundaries of India. Let's collaborate with an international research center. Let's create destinations rather than just sites. You know, you may have a local people doing a, a, a theater about the life of Amrapali and Vaishali. So you get local livelihood plus the story. We need to educate Indians, or all our people. I talk to people, school groups are coming. They don't have a clue who Buddha was, who, uh, why they had Kushinagar. They're coming in a tour group. So we also don't know the history of India. We don't know that for, in, for a thousand years, Indian history was Buddhist. Our secularization of education, our, uh, uh, our sort of democratization of politics, a lot of it comes from Buddhism. And I think a master plan of each of the places and the whole circuit is being done piecemeal. And so we must do an overall master plan of this. So we really try and integrate this circuit and with Urissa and with Maharashtra, I spent two, three weeks in Andhra. Incredible place in Tamil Nadu where, where Bodhi Dharma came from. They're very important to Chinese and Japanese. So India is really waiting for us to wake up. And we are, I'm very glad that we are creating forums like this where we can hopefully wake up. Not only, and business will flow. I have no doubt about it. You will all become rich if you want to, be, if that is your motivation. But you will also have an opportunity of touching our own uh, roots of our culture and becoming awakened. For me, my motivation and my career is to enlighten, or to be enlightened, not, but to be awake. Whatever happens, whether it's, so please try and put effort into this circuit, and I know you are by just being here, and I know the support that people like Mr. Ansari, Mr. Nayak, and of course, Aswad Chem are doing now, Wonderful. I really feel it's uh, never too late because this is like a relay. But please, um, uh, we'll work as a Sangha, as the Buddha said. You cannot work as individuals. Work as a, as a Sangha. All of us in our different ways. And uh, I will uh, close now and I will apologize also because I'll get up and I really want to hear other people. But I'll have to go to the airport to catch, uh, to go back to Kushinagar and feel the monsoon. Uh, retreat, the end of the monsoon retreat in Kushinagar. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, Buddha spent 24 years in Shravasti, and I was sitting there feeling the smelling uh, Shravasti, smelling the earth of Shravasti, and we are not marketing it. There was one Thai monk. We could have 
the whole of Thailand sitting where the Buddha sat for his monsoon retreat. It's easy marketing. But we are selling something else, still selling the Taj. Okay, Taj is good too, don't worry. Okay, so I'm just going to invite the bell, just three sounds of the bell, because it'll just help us just come back to your breathing, and that's the end of my talk. Yeah, is that okay? So you can just, if you feel like, just uh, nine breaths, three breaths each, each sound of the bell. <laughs>